Today we're continuing our series on sexual sin, and today's topic is homosexuality. Before we get into it today, I want to start with this. When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, he said emphatically, love God and love people. We have talked about this a lot already in this series, but I feel like I need to emphasize it here. It seems as if the Christian community has united against homosexuality in a way that doesn't honor God. Now look, we will talk about this in a minute, but I want to be perfectly clear. Homosexuality is wrong. However, the way many Christians treat people who struggle with same-sex attraction is also wrong. When Jesus walked on earth, he interacted with a lot of people, but most of his interaction were with those who all of culture agreed were sinners. And not a single time did Jesus tell one of those who were committing terrible acts that they were the scum of the earth or are going to hell. No. He loved them and he showed them their sin through his love. We are all sinners and we need to afford everyone grace when it comes to pointing out their sin. And that includes me. I am going to try as hard as possible to speak truth in love. I encourage you to listen with an open heart and mind before you jump to conclusions. I am simply here to explain what the Bible says about homosexuality. So let's start today with that mindset. Now let's look at five key lessons we can learn from the Bible on homosexuality. Number one. It is a sin. The Bible is clear that homosexual acts are wrong. But before you tune out because you feel like that is an unloving thing to say, hear me out. There are several Bible verses that clearly outline that homosexuality is a sin, and we will work through many of them here today. But let me start with this one. Romans 1, 26 through 27. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. This is pretty hard to ignore. Homosexuality is wrong. It is a sin and there is no getting around it. Now, there are a lot of people arguing that the verse I just read and other ones like it can be explained away, and that the Bible doesn't actually condemn homosexuality at all. But the idea of homosexuality has been around for a long time, and God's word has been clear from the very beginning. Let's look at the first example of it in the Bible. It's actually found in the very first book of the Bible, Genesis. Genesis 19, five through seven. They shouted to Lot, where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out so we can have sex with them. So Lot stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind him. Please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. Homosexuality is denounced there too. But people try to explain that one away as well. So let's back up and talk about what God designed sex for based on his word. And that leads us to our next point. Number two, homosexuality goes against God's design. Genesis 2, 24. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. It is very clear that God designed sex to be for marriage. That's what we talked about in the last video. And that's what that verse means when it says two are united into one. And it is also clear from that verse that marriage is between one man and one woman. And that's it. So homosexuality literally goes against God's design. And let me bring back up the definition of sin here. Sin is going our own way instead of God's. Homosexuality is not how God intended for us to live. So if we practice it, we are going our own way instead of God's. Now that may seem pretty harsh, but remember, we shouldn't try to fit the Bible to our lifestyle. We should fit our lifestyle to the Bible. And that means looking to God for the final truth. God created men and women differently on purpose for a purpose. And that purpose comes down to marriage between one man and one woman only. So it's clear that homosexuality is not in God's design. Now, if you struggle with same-sex attraction, that might be hard to hear, but please don't disregard it. Keep listening because this isn't the end of the story. Let's move on to our next point. Number three, attraction and action are not the same. The Bible is very clear. Practicing homosexuality is wrong. Leviticus 18.22. Do not practice homosexuality. Having sex with another man as with a woman, it is a detestable sin. There is not a verse in the Bible that says having same-sex attraction is a sin. If you find someone of the same sex to be attractive, you are not sinning. What matters is what you do with those thoughts. Because acting on same-sex attraction, either in sexual fantasies or in homosexual acts, is a sin. But just having a thought that someone of the same sex is attractive that doesn't mean you are gay. It's okay to appreciate another person's beauty, regardless of their sex. But if you struggle with actual same-sex attraction to the point where you question if you are gay or not, 
You don't have to dwell on it. And that brings us to our next point. Number four, it's not your identity. The world is doing everything possible to make you believe that if you struggle with same-sex attraction, then you are gay. But hear me when I say this, your sexual temptations have nothing to do with your identity because your identity should be found in Christ. Like we just talked about, God created sex for a reason, and the enemy is just trying to twist that reason in any way he can. But don't believe his lies. Sex was never intended to be the most important thing in our lives. Matthew 22, 37 through 39, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is what God says is most important relationships. Relationships with friends, family, and God. And ultimately, it is our relationship with God that we should find our identity in, not in our sexuality. Because there are not gay people or straight people, only people people. Number five, it is not the unforgivable sin. I feel an immense amount of empathy for those who struggle with same-sex attraction. The way many Christians treat them is wrong and no one deserves to be treated that way. And I just wanna make this point really quick. Struggling with same-sex attraction is not some curse that God gave you. If you struggle with it, God is not giving you some undeserved punishment. Everyone struggles with different sins, but God never gives us more than what we can handle. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Denying yourself the ability to act on your same-sex attraction is the same as anyone else denying themselves the ability to act on any other sexual temptation. Almost everyone struggles with lust, and no matter what form it takes on, it is wrong, and it must be controlled if we are to honor God. Homosexual lust is just as bad as heterosexual lust, because all lust is lust and all sin is sin. Which also means that just because your struggle is same-sex attraction, it doesn't make you any worse than someone else who struggles with lying, cussing, or anger. All sin is sin, and that is why I love this verse. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. That is a long list and it includes a lot of different sins over a broad spectrum. And the important thing is the last part none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Don't let anyone tell you that just because you struggle with same-sex attraction, you are unforgivable. Your sin and my sin and everyone's sin is just that, sin. And all of it equally separates us from God. But what matters is what we do after we realize it is a sin. Because this is the good news. This is exactly why Jesus came and died to save us from our sin. By believing in him and trusting in what he did, he will wash away all of your sin including homosexuality. That means any mistakes you made in the past in this area have no hold on your future or your eternity. And I feel like I need to mention one last thing. Jesus' sacrifice does not mean you can just live however you want. The Bible talks about us denying our flesh so we can live a new life with God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. So if you have struggled with homosexuality, or any sin really, you need to repent in a way that honors God. 2 Corinthians 7.10 For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow. But worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. There are two kinds of repentance, worldly and godly. Worldly repentance is where you say, Sorry, God, and then you just keep on sinning. It's not true repentance because you don't change your actions. But godly repentance is where you realize you are wrong, turn away from your sin, and run back to God. You are never too far gone. No matter what you struggle with, you can always turn from your sin and run to God. Don't wait. Let today be the day that you truly repent. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.